Bears, Bulls, Buckeyes. That's right. It's the stock market stock watch on the podcast daily. We're back again. Training camp is over, so this might be the last one for a while. So that's a bear market, a bull market, and it's about the Buckeyes. Get it, Bill? Got it. I was wondering where you were going there, but I got it now. Yeah, we're there. We're and we're flying. That's Bill Landis, Jeremy Birmingham, and I am Austin Ward. Uh, training camp over. Ohio State, Indiana in nine days. Uh, the stock watch will probably be retired for a couple weeks into the season. So I know how much we've enjoyed doing it. Uh, but let's make the most of the last one for a while and let's start it with Jeremy Birmingham. Stock up on Travion Henderson. Again, uh, I just. Old. Keep you bought buying. it all. You already have keep, it all. Keep, keep buying it. I'm. I want more of it. Um, and in some ways, I think because I am feeling so optimistic about what we've got in this specific Travion Henderson stock, it almost forces a stock down on the rest of the running backs individually uh, from a statistical standpoint. I really just believe that we are provided he stays healthy, and that's always the asterisk on everything. Uh, if Travion Henderson stays healthy from just everything that we hear after every practice, like he's got to be the running back. And I think he will be the bell cow running back and not a guy who's getting just 40% of the snaps. I think you're talking 70% of the snaps. There's an app that I use, Burham, and I won't name it specifically because they're not paying us, but they have a 23% futures boost going on right now in the great state of Ohio, would you allocate your own units in a real stock market towards the idea of Travion Henderson winning the Heisman Trophy? I would probably put down a couple units, yeah. Nope. I live in Michigan, though, so I wouldn't have access to this particular... Um, well, you were here yesterday. Oh, true, 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 and true, you'll be, true. And it's not a very far drive. It's true. I could actually just go to the store and... Uh, get it but you know no big deal but uh yeah i I just i'm really all in right now on travion henderson as long as he's able to stay healthy i think that he is ohio state's running back and not a running back by committee like we've been kind of expecting all summer is that the first uh double double stock per no i guess it wasn't double purchase but you you bought something you dumped some at the same time it's a bought it's a buyback it's a are you buying from yourself are you buying travion stock from yourself are we allowed to get away with insider trading here? <laughs> That's the whole point of the show is that we're supposedly oh, insiders. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I see. Yeah. Buy more stock in Travion Henderson, but buy it from me directly, and I'll give it to you at a slight increase over what I paid for it. That is the great evolution of this show that we have here is that they used to be stock tips for non-existent stocks, and now they've morphed into apparently, well, they're still fake, but we treat them as so. if they're real currency. Yeah. Austin, what did you put your, your uh, boost on? Uh, this particular app was kind enough to send me two of them, and nice. I haven't decided where to spend the second one. The first one went on Wyoming to win the Mountain West Conference Championship. Oh, hell yeah. Nice. I like that. I picked Oregon State to win the Pac-12. Yeah. So uh, if you happen to use any app that might have those, let us know uh, where you would put it. Uh, it I don't think it was letting people me initially use it on the Heisman, but I'm going to try again later on because uh, I think Marvin Harrison's odds are still the most appealing to me. And if the two quarterback situation lingers for a week or two, that may affect their numbers and their odds moving forward. And Marvin will probably still score a lot of touchdowns. So I think he's think maybe buy some stock in Marvin Harrison winning individual awards. That's actually a good pick. Is that your pick here? Is that your pick? It wasn't going to be, but now it is. Okay. Which are we? So, so the Blitnikoff? All of them. All of them. He's going to win the Outland. He's going to win the Blitnikoff. He's He's going to win win the the Con Smythe. (laughs) He's going to win the Lady Bing (laughs) uh, and the Triple Crown. uh, He's going to win them all. I'm I'm quite, I I haven't talked a lot about Marvin this month because we, we already do that, like in stocks or other things, but. I just, I mentioned it when we were in the Woody on, on Tuesday night, like watching him work, like not even in a game, not a game, just practice, just Monarch. 
is really, really cool and fun to watch. And I, I want to appreciate it. We were kind of robbed of that. Maybe, maybe that's why it's in my mind this off season heading into next Saturday is like Jackson could have done some really special things. And we were robbed of that due to the injury and never didn't get to appreciate it on the heels of that Rose bowl and, and never saw it again. So you want to appreciate and cherish those moments while you can. Uh, and even when it means just practice, I think that's cool to watch what Marvin Harrison Jr. is doing because aliens don't visit this world very often, and you don't know how long they're going to stay. So Do they? There was a congressional hearing on that just a few weeks ago, and nobody even mentioned Marvin Harrison, which is strange to me. <laughs> well, they didn't think reveal all the documents. Yeah. Think about how valuable, though, a guy like Marvin Harrison is for players like Carnell Tate. For Brandon and Noah Rogers, like they see this guy, and you you hear about it, and you know you hear about it in recruiting, like oh, Marv's our hardest worker. But then you walk into the building, and then he's actually the one still just doing all this stuff, despite the fact that he's traveling to France for you know fashion shows or doing all the other stuff that he gets to do now because of NIL and the opportunity to to get a little scratch for for being what he is. But like you see it, and, and I think that's why the feedback and the talk about the younger receivers have been so lofty like they they have no choice but to do that otherwise you fall behind in a way you can't catch up to thanks marv he went to paris i think so i don't remember that one you'll have to google it trust me he was in cleveland they just look very similar (laughs) it's worth a google called cleveland the paris of ohio that's right maybe he was in philly they're also very both, both cities of love um is it my turn Yes. Okay. I sure hope so. <laughs> um, so, so uh, Doug, Lee, Maurice, and I did a, a, a two-hour podcast about one position uh, last week on the offensive tackles, uh, at the outset of which I said he was not going to uh, change my mind on being optimistic about their chances. But he got pretty close to getting me like almost fully out on Josh Simmons uh, because he's just very convincing. Didn't get me quite there, though. And then Ryan Day this week um, talked pretty confidently, I think, about about Josh Simmons. Now, is Feels that a right reflection? Yeah, is that a reflection of his play? Is that is that they think he's a guy who like needs to hear those things and like does well with positive reinforcement? Maybe it's some combination of both. But it it brought me back to reality a little bit and thinking that his athletic traits are going to shine through in a year where he'll probably have some ups and downs as he transitions to playing against better competition week in and week out. But the way that he was talked about at left tackle compared to the way he was taught, the way Josh Fryer and Luke Montgomery were talked about at right tackle, which seemed like much more of a open-ended thing than left tackle was um, makes me think that it's probably worth buying a little bit of Josh Simmons stock at the moment. I I don't know that I'd buy a ton of it. I'm still in, in wait and see mode. But uh, that made me, the way that Ryan Day talked about him in the left tackle spot made me feel a little bit better about the direction that that's going. Well, I think there's something going on here that you hit on, which is that some guys respond to the discussion about them outside of the Woody, the feedback from coaches differently. And I'm not, we don't know for sure. You say maybe Josh Simmons responds to positive encouragement. You know who I think loves being doubted? Josh Fryer. The other one? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I he's like, you know what? You keep talking about Luke Montgomery. Do it. I dare you. Because I don't think Josh Fryer is worried about how he's going to play at right tackle. That's yeah. not the sense when I talk to him. And, and when I do, and last week he's like, you're the only one who said I could play left tackle. And I'm like, how do you know that? He's seeking out the negativity. He wants it. He doesn't like it that I think he's going to be good. So does he hate me? <laughs> he secretly loves you. <laughs> he wants you to hate him. What are the what are the what would the odds be on Josh Simmons going false start on the first offensive snap of the game oh, at Indiana? <laughs> Firm. This isn't just predictions. No, I'm I'm just asking. We're we're talking financial stuff here. There's stocks. There's there's betting advice. Josh Simmons had an issue with that a year ago at San Diego State. It's not a secret. It's well documented. First game in the Big Ten on the road playing in front of a bigger crowd than he is used to playing in Indiana, despite the fact that they aren't going to be very good, that crowd's going to be loud in that first quarter. People get excited when football's back. What would the number be that he jumps false start on the first play of the game? Plus 600. 
I might throw a fiver on that. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'd probably probably go. With you. I think he's going to have a great year. I think I think Josh Simmons is going to have a great year. I think that it's going to be fascinating to watch how that first game hits him when it when you realize like, oh boy, this is this is not the Mountain West. No offense. They're to also, Wayne. yeah, they're not calling him Jimmy too, which I think is another reason to be stuck up on him. That's right. He gets his name back. Yeah. Gets yeah. He's being back. a little bit more serious now. All right, Brim, you have a second stock tip for us? Uh, Jack Sawyer up. Um, I can't help but be struck by the way he was talked about this week. And try not to get too high or low based on what coaches say in press conferences, but um, we've we've had a sneaking suspicion for the last month that a trimmed down Jack Sawyer playing the position that he's really meant to play could be a difference maker or at least make more of an impact than he did a year ago when he led the team in sacks. Um, but it didn't feel like he led the team in sacks in a good way a year ago. It was almost by accident. I think that he's a player that a lot of people have sort of slumped on and, and maybe sold stock on because of the positional confusion from a year ago, um, because of the expectations around Kenyatta Jackson this offseason. I still think Jack Sawyer is in line for a, a big year. Um, and seeing him and, and hearing him and talking to him like, he just seems like a super confident kid who feels like at home again at defensive end. And I, I think he's going to re- you know, wreak some havoc in week one. For as much as you may be able to discount, how much does a silver bullet of the day honor really count? I don't remember many guys doing it back to back. Yeah, that's true. He's been, he's obviously been playing pretty well uh, in practice. He's healthy. He's slimmed down. He's quicker. Um, and that is Real good news for Ohio State's defensive line and bad news for Indiana's offensive line. Hmm. I'm going to go scoop up a little bit more Davison Igbenosin stock before the season begins. Uh, I know it's been probably picked up at a steady clip since spring, and the first time that we walked out there and saw uh, the line of corners go kind of like this, uh, if you can't, if you're listening audio only, it was a big jump. It was like there was a mountain out there against the rest of uh, some high plateaus, and he's got the unique skill set, but he's also got a lot of those HOBs that the coaching staff has talked so much about uh, dating back to March and April. I like th- my conversation with him. I like th- the way I, that he carries himself. He's very confident. He's certainly got the athleticism. And then you can discount coach speak if you want, but when players are talking about matchups and how difficult they are, when wide receivers like Marvin Harrison Jr. are saying, This guy wants to do a lot of extra releases on a Saturday and they go work and compete for 30 minutes on their own. That seems like pretty good work for Davis and Igbenosin. And if Marvin Harrison Jr. says that it's competitive for him, well, that doesn't bode well for a lot of other receivers who might get matched up with him. I still think that the rotation is going to be pretty even between those three. There's a lot to like uh, in Jordan Hancock. And then I've, I've purchased a lot of Denzel Burke previously with the way that he's approached this offseason and his mentality. But it's, uh, I think, pretty intriguing to see what Davis and Igbenosin can bring to that group as they try and reclaim BIA status, which you might want to invest in some stock in that too because I think that entire group could be a little salty. Was it uh, an answer to your question, Austin, earlier in the week when Ryan Day was talking about the like the length in the secondary and how much that has showed up and kind of caught his attention? Like that's... That's Sonny Styles, obviously, but that's a lot of Davis and Igbenosin too, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to be good. And Jordan Hancock and Malik Hartford. I mean, it, it's a it's a different looking group than it was a Stop year ago. Stop saying, guys, we were going to buy stock in, Berm. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's your turn, Bill. <laughs> well, I'm not going to say Malik Hartford now. You have to. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, yeah. He was trying to trick you so that you didn't do it, and then he could buy it. I think like Malik Hartford is going to be starting for them by like the middle of the year now. That, that's how far I've gone. I've, I've gone with this. Um, effusive praise from Jim Knowles, like, and we've heard it since the spring when he showed up and lost his black stripe early. Um, I think Berms made some good points about him still being rather skinny, but uh, he definitely has added weight, and and I think it's like not going to be to his detriment that he's perhaps a little smaller or slighter now than you'd like him to be ideally. But uh, I pay attention when they start talking about freshmen the way they're talking about Malik Hartford and the fact that Jim Knowles said that that's still kind of a competition at the adjuster position with Malik and Josh Proctor and Jihad Carter, who is apparently a little bit banged up, although practicing enough to lose his black stripe the other day. So like he's still in the mix. But 
Um, I don't know. It just feels like Malik Harford is, is on the rise, has been for a while, um, and that role is going to be much larger than I initially anticipated, or I think anyone initially anticipated. And you can look at him and realize that he still has to put on some some body mass. But the, my concern with a kid like Malik is because he is an ext- extremely instinctive, like really twitched up football player. I worry he's going to knock himself out of some games hitting people, and that's until he puts on a little bit more weight. But uh, he he's going to get a chance, and that kid likes to hit people. And uh, it's it's kind of funny because when you talk to him off the field, he's extremely like genuine, nice, like soft spoken, but. He is a he is a heat seeking missile on the field, and I think that shows up in practice. And it's like one of those things where you really can't deny it. You can talk about receivers and be like, "Oh, this guy runs good routes and he catches the ball," but is he doing it against the best defensive? Event? Like when guys just like to hit people and are like enjoying the physicality of football, that's a totally different thing. And I think that's eye opening for coaches. Do you think um, when we got to the second open practice of camp, Big Ten Network uh, camp tour? And the two people wearing the neon yellow green pennies were Sonny Styles and Malik Hartford. Do you think that was to protect them or to protect receivers? I mean, we joked about it that morning. Like, is it that those guys aren't allowed to hit people today? Because that that would make them more that would make sense to me. Uh, but I think both of them are in a position where you worry like maybe they hit people a little bit too aggressively and hurt themselves when in preseason, when it doesn't matter. Pre conference, preseason, pre conference. Pre pre non con? Pre non con, pre non con. Who's my next guy? He knows this is. He scripted this pregnant pause over here. Mm. Look, is it Carnell Tate again? Oh, oh wow! <laughs> hey, remember when I used to get just absolutely criticized, yeah. excoriated by Berm for making the same picks on bold prediction at the end as a joke, mm. and now he's seriously. Taking Let, the same people for stonks every week. Let's compare as a joke and contrast. Is that the joke? Is that the joke? <laughs> the the difference is other people continue to talk about Carnell Tate and force us to acknowledge it. Like you can't ignore how much he's talked about by everyone else in this program. Like you can't. The punt return thing hasn't happened in forty seven years, so no one buys it. Okay. But like we're trying, I, I'm trying not to talk about Carnell Tate. And then Marvin Harrison says that he's further along right now than Marvin was as a sophomore. And as a sophomore, Marvin Harrison was the best receiver in football. So it's sort of difficult to hear that and not be like, oh my gosh, really? And then you hear Brian Hartline, who as, as much as Brian Hartline loves his receivers and he will support them, like he is not the guy that's out there generally giving public praise to his receivers. He is normally pretty hard on them publicly and saying this guy he's still not doing this he still needs to improve here and that tuesday night he was talking about carnell tate like he had just been elected to the hall of fame so i it's (laughs) it's hard to ignore that and however it has to occur i'm just more and more convinced that he's not just going to play some minutes for ohio state this year but to be a, a a real weapon in the offense you're not wrong Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. Gold jacket. I'm going to take some uh, both both long-term and short-term stock that I wouldn't have purchased normally. But I'm going to take some hero canoe action. That was my next pick. <laughs> that's, that's a tough break over there. Mm-hmm. And I tell you, it's the footwork that I really like about hero canoe. <laughs> uh, quick feet, fast feet. Can really talk about the game. The man knows football, and he's learning how to play American football at uh, a pretty aggressive clip. Um, I remember that Larry Johnson press conference in May, where the three of us all uh, inadvertently asked him the same question about Hero Canoe's development. Because I thought that the progress from day one in spring to, you know, practice 14, 15 was really evident that he was starting to get it. You can see his body changing. You can see the confidence changing. I really enjoy talking with him. He's fascinating, uh, unique story, unique background. Uh, I like all of it. And, and that's a kid that I would really like to see uh, succeed. It's new to him, but Ohio state also needs, you know, more of that, more of that bulk, more of that beef, uh, up front. Uh, 
Hero Canoe. Let's watch it. I'm I'm in, I'm invested now. You're yeah. only saying this because you guys kicked don't, us out. All together don't say no. That's what. Fifteen no. minutes on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. I mean, I come on. Know. We all watched it. Austin was flirting with him the whole time, trying to get stock at a lower price. Unbelievable. I think that, prob- I think that probably would have inflated his stock. Yeah, for everyone else, not for you, because he sold it to you on the cheap. He did. Who yeah. is a uh, who's his favorite soccer player? Manuel Neuer, and oh, yeah. uh, then he also loved Iker Casillas, couple goalies, goalie guy, and, yeah. Yeah. and then um, you know Philip Lahm. So Bayern Munich, that's I guess he's lucky that he got to cheer for the best team in the Bundesliga. That was his nearby club, and I guess he. I want to know a lot more about this. He they were approaching him about joining their youth club, and I think he kind of outgrew that possibility of playing uh soccer in germany but uh that's to ohio state's benefit he's got cool stories man i really enjoyed that yes it is a berm is right it is because i had that lengthy conversation and uh kicked the soccer ball around with him but i thought sometimes that's the best way to get to know somebody and i hadn't spent a lot of time getting to actually know him personally he hasn't done a lot of media even though he's always standing around watching it and wanting to ask questions of his teammates. Um, So now I've come away uh, believing in Hero Canoe. H-O-B's, F-O-B's with Hero Canoe. (laughs) Mm. Berm, who's your favorite Bundesliga team? You know what? Uh, To be honest, I was going to just edit out this entire part of the show. No. Um, I don't know what Bundesliga is, but it sounds made up. It's fun to say, though, isn't it? It's sort of fun, but uh, again, I don't know what it is. I assume uh, it's something to do with soccer, probably in Germany, because Meyer, you said Munich, which I understand is a place in Germany. Um, other than that, everything else that has been said in the last five minutes, I, I sort of just glazed over and was thinking about wide receiver play. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, well, at least he used the context clues to get all that right. That's right. That's right. Munich is in Germany. So I maybe, suck at uh, math. Geography, I'm not bad at. I understand where Munich is. Hmm. What's the capital of Djibouti? <laughs> That's not a real place. And let's move on. <laughs> it's, the, it's, it's Djibouti. Uh, I did not play soccer with Brandon Innes. I would like to. <laughs> I think that'd be a nice time for everybody. Um, I don't know how much he's going to play. I mostly just want to keep saying his name to manifest him returning punts this year. So I'm going to mention him at every turn and buy some stock in my hopes and dreams that they let him return punts and kicks. Brandon Ennis. Kicks. Yeah. That's when like you, you on Buckeye talk. You can just be like Brandon Ennis from now on. You can just throw that in there. <laughs> Bill, what did you think when Parker Fleming answered that question that I asked him on Tuesday night and you saw that answer? Uh, I screamed internally. <laughs> yeah. Which I, yeah, it's, I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't, why, why, why? Like I don't, Brandon Innes is returning kicks on the other 128 teams in college football, probably. Cause that's what yeah. you do with true freshmen. You let them return kicks and house it, which he will do if you let them have the opportunity, but they won't. Cause that's not what they do. And Emeka Ibuka will do it. And, uh, I hope that works out well for everybody. <laughs> Knock up on a Mecca Buka returning kicks. If if he ends the drought, I mean, I'm all for that. This is your I, god. <laughs> That's goes. I I'm actually not in favor of a Mecca doing it, and I'm less in favor of the fact that he was mentioned to do both jobs. I think that would be problematic potentially. What was weirder was that he that Parker Fleming said that Brandon Ennis was going to be kicking field goals. <laughs> I didn't get it. Well, the battle's ongoing. They're going to let that play out over the first couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah it's they're going to have fun. open auditions during the game, and like they're going to draw a number out of a hat, and it's like, oh, it's eleven. Hey, Brandon Ennis, it's your turn to kick. Yeah, are we doing um, season bold peas tomorrow on the we daily? Are. That's correct. Ooh. Whew. Gotta do gotta some correct. So buckle up. Freaky Fridays are back with some bold peas. Uh, we're gonna take the season long view on that, and then we're gonna 
have a little bit of a breather over the weekend. Kings of Columbus will uh, be back on another Saturday, uh, but the Buckeyes are regrouping, and so are we heading into the real grind. Uh, thanks again for joining us to start your Thursday with some stonk watching. Uh, that's Bill Landis and Jeremy Birmingham. I am Austin Ward. We will talk to you tomorrow.